you're 200 U.S. astronauts, so you're looking at half a percent of the U.S. astronaut uh, crew. Um, and, and her husband is this phenomenal glass blower. And uh, he's, you know, he's the most proud of his wife of any husband in, on the, of the seven billion people on the planet. And, and, and he celebrates her with his glass. And, and he's like the Leonardo da Vinci of blown glass. And, you know, I think it must be pretty hard to be married to an astronaut, and especially when he's, you know, been two times uh, up in space uh, in witness protection up there. Uh, do you pay taxes up there, I wonder, um, uh, for your, when you're up there? So, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, you know, she was going to be in Greenland. She was going to try to get here. Uh, and I said, look, you know, just let's Skype in and, and you'll be the closer. Uh, my favorite astronaut. And I, she's inspired legions. And I'm sure she will inspire you. So, Katie Coleman. Well, hello, and uh, you know, it's uh, I'm I'm both glad and sorry not to be there. I have to tell you, I think you're going to hate me, and the reason is is that um, the reason I'm not there is I am about to go off on an adventure with friends, which is, I think is the best thing that any of us could do, and I and I consider tonight uh, with uh, TripAdvisor to be an adventure as well. Uh, I, I have some really wonderful friends that have a plane and they're about to travel from Boston up to Goose Bay, Labrador, onto Greenland, onto Iceland, and finally to the Faroe Islands. And they asked if my husband and I could come with them. And this is not the kind of trip that you let friends do alone, right? And so uh, we, we agreed to go with them. But uh, it turns out that we have been dealing with something I'm actually pretty experienced with, and that is launch delays. And that we've had some equipment problems and some and some weather problems, and we are leaving hopefully tomorrow. But my bet is actually on Saturday. But getting back to exploration, you know, a lot of people think that a trip like that would, for me, would be like, oh, you know, you're only going like a third of the way around the world. You know, what does that mean to you when you've, you know, spent six months up on the space station? And it, it means everything to me, in that. It's all about perspective. And I, I loved living on the space station. And I loved being able to look out the window, um, I would say, almost every day. Uh, it, and it's, it's an amazing view, and it, I think it changes you. And at the same time, you know, our planet is a place that it, it, we're, we're part of. And I love seeing it from up there. I love seeing it from down here. And, and I like understanding how to put those perspectives together. So it is fun to go fast, but at the same time, uh, just being someplace and realizing that somebody else is watching that place from somewhere else and they have a different perspective. That is really what, what I get out of these experiences. And um, Patrick, could you show the picture that I sent you? I'm just going to show a single slide. I just saw it yesterday on space.com. And when I realized that I was still going to be able to be present at the, the conference, um, Patrick, are they, they are able to see it now? Yay. So that is the Andromeda Galaxy, uh, M31, Mother 31 is its name. It is the closest spiral galaxy to our Milky Way. And that picture was taken in Portugal at a, in a dark, dark night sky. And right in the middle of it, that little swirly thing, right up in the middle of the sky, that is the Andromeda Galaxy. And that picture just struck me because I it, it made me realize that I really do believe in galaxies. I mean, I've always known that they exist. We all read books, you know, we, uh, we read the news, we, if, you know, picture of the day, uh, you know, astronomy picture of the day, all those things. But somehow when I see a picture that a person took of the night sky, of our night sky, and that galaxy is right there looking with a, cam with a, with a lens, you can see it that that's a place that is our neighbor. It was really significant to me. And, and, and who knows, maybe somebody from there is looking back at us. And so we, we heard a lot of talks tonight. I got to hear bits and pieces of, of different ones. And to me, they're actually all about exploration of different sorts. And I think it takes people to explore. People will make the discoveries of the future, whether they are in technology or across our galaxy. 
leaving our planet or on the planet, helping us stay on the planet. All of these are journeys of exploration and none of them happen alone. And I think that nights like tonight, when people stand up on a stage and gather their courage and share things that they think are important, well, this is the way that we take steps forward. So I'm really, uh, I'm sorry not to be there. And at the same time, just knowing that you're together, knowing, reading the bios, you know, looking uh, a bit wistfully at, uh, you know, the people I would have been if I could have been there, it still just makes me realize that nights like tonight are, are, are something to celebrate. And I also think that there's something to take forward. I think that, you know, for, for a few people, uh, it's not so hard to step up on a stage and it's not so hard to decide what to share. But for most of us, there's some part of that process that's hard and that we need help with. And sharing those thoughts and those feelings of what that experience is like with you, for you with other people will bring more people to more stages. And those stages can be someplace like where you are today, or they could be the grocery store or standing on the subway. I mean, those are stages as well. And those are places that we, we try on different personas. We step up on that stage, no matter where it is, and, and, and share. And, and realize that there are more aspects to each of us than even we understand. And that is the way that steps forward are taken. So I'd like to thank everybody for sharing their stories tonight. I think that collaboration takes being brave. I think it takes being open. And in most cases, I would say all of us have to be both. And in this world, when I look at the interdisciplinary problems that we need to solve, none of us can understand enough about the different aspects of those problems, the different disciplines that come into play to solve them. And so in order to do that, we're going to have to do it together. We're going to have to talk to people that we don't know. We're going to have to talk to people that we don't like. And we're going to learn stuff that we thought we were done with. But when you do it in a place like this with TEDx, it's pretty marvelous. Hey, Katie, so, I, I, have, yeah. I have a few questions. Um, one, okay. can you tell us about the patches that you're wearing? Two, um, you know, do you think going to Mars is going to be a thing? And what comes to mind when you think about traveling to Mars, humans? Um, commercial flight versus NASA, what's your opinion? And then do you have any props or artifacts in your home that you want to show us? I see some of Josh's stuff in the background. You have like an extra uh, steering wheel for a, 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 the shuttle in there. Uh, okay, go. Oh. Okay, so so actually Josh is in the background. I'm going to ask him to help me. Hey, will you get my um, my my space shuttle nut? So the patches. Um, well, there's one for your country, which is really pretty wonderful to have. Um, and I I will say that having um, and and Josh, will you bring me a planet as well? Sure. Um, and so it's pretty wonderful to have uh, to represent your country. And at the same time, looking down, you realize that it's just one piece of the puzzle. Um, you add, let's see other patches. These are my space station missions. And when we go to the space station, we go up in groups of. Um, we go up in groups of three. So when I got there, uh, Scott Kelly and his two Russian crewmates were already there. So we come, they're, they're there, three more come, that's us. Um, Paolo from Italy, Scott Kelly and myself, or sorry, Paolo from Italy, Dima Kadrativ and myself come, and now we're six. And then three go away and, and three more come. And so we're, we're part of a crew of six, but it's really two crews of six. So there's a lot of getting used to other people and learning how to collaborate with them. And something that I, I really try to share when I'm out there sharing is that we have a luxury as astronauts in that when we're up on that space station and we look around, we are the only people that are gonna get the job done up there. And, and so you realize that if you don't do something or you don't enable one of your crewmates to do it, then it's not gonna get done and it's important. And so that's a luxury that we have to realize that we're we're a, we're a crew and that there is no one else. But when I look back at the planet, of course, I see the crew down there and all sorts of different crews. There are so few things that any of us do alone. Um, you asked a bunch about Mars, but first I will just share uh, this. This is this is I think we have a lot of cool things in our house. This is one of my favorite things, and because I like to stay married, I gave it to my husband. So when the shuttle lifts off. There are those, uh, this is, this is uh, one of the nuts on the bolts 
that were holding down the solid rocket boosters. So, you know, there's the space shuttle, there's those orange tank, there's those two white candle-like things. Each of those white big candle-like things, which are rockets, are held down with four bolts. And when we count down, the engines light about six seconds before launch, and they actually push that shuttle over about, the nose actually swings about six feet. And when it swings back to zero, that's when, uh, that's when these bolts blow and the, those solid rocket boosters fire and we lift off the launch pad. So it's pretty cool to come home. First of all, cool to come home. And second, it's uh, it's pretty great when they, they give you actually both halves of these. So I, Josh and I commuted for about 24 years or so. And so I gave him one half and I had the other. And you asked me, and I will talk about Mars, but um, you asked me about uh, some of the art that's around. Josh is a glass artist and he made planets like this one like a dozen years before we ever, ever met. And and we actually met because I called the wrong phone number. And so, but, you know, I, I bring that up because I, I think that sometimes you just have to come outside yourself and answer the phone or talk to somebody different and really look at them and really listen to them and wonder what their life is like. And um, and maybe you'll get nice presents like this. <laughs> so, so Josh was making these long before we ever met. But I'm a big, I'm a big believer that all of us explore in different ways. And you know, similar to me saying that that picture of the Andromeda galaxy really spoke to me and said, "Wow, now I really feel like galaxies are real because I could see it and I could see it in context." You know, Josh makes these planets. They're they're bits of glass and metal that, you know, he's put together. He makes every piece in there. And, and I love it when there's, uh, I'll see if this could go up to the lens here. When you really look at it and you see that there's sort of organized places there. And I like to say that, you know, we're approaching this planet for the first time, but somebody else has been there already. And they have been very, very busy. So I think the the power of storytelling, the power of art, uh, the power of visual things is really, really important in trying to achieve a mission. And that really brings us to Mars. One of my favorite statistics is that when I applied to be an astronaut in 1992, about 2,400 people applied. And then 20 years later, 6,500 people applied. Now, in between, we had selections, but I just picked those data points. In, a, in about 20 years, the, a number of people saying, I would like to be an astronaut tripled. About three years after that, 18,500 people applied. So from 6,500, three years later, 18,500 people. And the only thing that I can tell that was different is that the Martian movie came out. And people saw that movie, and they and I think they just said, well, hey, they're really going. And if I want to be a part of that, I had better raise my hand. And that is the power of storytelling. And, and I, you know, in my retired life, I love being involved in films and movies that paint a, a picture of the future where we all see each other. And I think that's a real, we see, we see ourselves. I think it's a really important aspect of it, that when you see a movie, you see you know, you see women, you see minorities, you see different people standing up, being courageous and doing the missions. And then you realize that you are one of those people. Did I get everything, John? Uh, if this was an Uber drive, you'd get five stars. Great, <laughs> great, or ten stars. Great, great. Oh, can we see Josh? Oh, Josh, will you come? Will you come say hi? Yeah. And uh, so actually, you know, we're, we're, we live up here about two hours west of uh, Boston. We're actually headed that way for our uh, plane ride. So, so Josh, um, Hi. when you are on Earth and your wife is on a rocket in space or on the space station, what's that like? I, they depict it in movies, but those actors are faking it. What's it? You're one of a handful that can really say what that what that is like. Are you asking Josh or are you asking me? I missed the first part of your question, but I... As a spouse, I, uh, what's it like to have your wife being hurled into space or being on the space station? We, we didn't hear the wife part. I'm like, <laughs> hey, I'm supposed to know about that. You know, um, <laughs> I I was actually pretty stressed about it when she got, uh, when she got, 
assigned to that mission. But I realized at some point along the way that there were thousands of people who were responsible for her safety and that that uh, they were going to do the best job they could. And not, no amount of worrying on my part was going to do anything. And that worked. That worked right up until the time that they got to the 10, 9, 8 part of uh, the countdown. And uh, there's a there. we were on the roof of the vehicle assembly building uh, watching – and uh, you can still, if you run your fingers along the pipe, you can still feel where my hands squashed the pipe, uh, worrying about it. So last question, Katie, I, I know you're an MIT grad and you've met uh, Buzz Aldrin, but I also know you've met uh, Neil Armstrong. You know, how important was their personalities and in, 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 in how they approached what they did, um, you know, for the vector of the space program and how we see space? Well, those are two pretty different guys, and and I think they were, and, and actually, ironically, you know, we've both met them together, and, and I, I know Neil, or knew Neil better than um, than Buzz, but you know, they're they're clearly way different guys, and you know, and you could pick who you wanted to have dinner with or who you wanted to spend a long time with in a small capsule, um, but both of them bring things to the mission. And, you know, I'd, I'd sit in a capsule with anybody, I'll tell you that. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's what I think the space program is all about. And, and you asked about uh, commercial versus NASA. I mean, it is a wonderful, amazing, astonishing time in the space program in terms of, I mean, there are things that are, that are hard for the government to do. And our commercial partners like Boeing, like SpaceX, like Blue Origin, like Orbital Sciences, those folks are able to do things that we can't, and and especially they're especially able to take risks with hardware that we can't. That doesn't mean with people, but with hardware, and that really jumps all of us ahead. Katie, I, I um, last three, last question: uh, What are your three favorite science fiction movies? Ooh, that's actually a hard one for me. Um, I'm kind of in the more recent kind of genre i would say um certainly gravity is up there because i got to help because i when i was up there my brother met sandra bullock's brother-in-law and our crew got to give her advice about the movie but i actually really loved that movie because i feel really lucky to have gone to space and i think that that movie gravity shows you not only the view and what it you know seeing the view of the earth but what it feels like to have that view um i love mystery science theater 3000 because I think that those little robots are so funny and I think it makes all of us have a different point of view. One of my favorite lines in that movie is they're, they're, they're watching the, the little robots or watching movies. And in one of the movies, there's a kind of old fashioned off in space on the bridge of the spaceship thing. And, uh, and, and the commander looks at somebody else and says, how do we stand on fuel? And the little guys, the little robot guys go, I'm for it. <laughs> All right. Live long and prosper. We're saluting you. Thank you. Our taxpayer dollars were well spent on you representing us in space. Good luck in the next chapter of your career. Uh, kick ass. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.